there's custom boxes for bananas, and there's custom boxes for apples. But why not for other fruit? I once smushed my MacBook into a banana, which was down at the bottom of my backpack, and the thing went inside the MacBook and shorted the whole thing out. And I had to buy a completely new MacBook just because of that. And that's why I'm making custom boxes for a bunch of fruit. So the fruit is protected from you and you're protected from it. First up, we're starting small with this blueberry. All right, third time. Delicious. So these do get smushed pretty easily and it's kind of hard to snack them on the go. Either you just have something that just gets really smushed or you have a huge box that probably won't be filled. But we're gonna solve that. The plan in itself is pretty easy. We're gonna make a blueberry shaped container to have your blueberries in so you definitely know what you're carrying and everything's safe. So while the plan is pretty straightforward, there is a problem. I don't know how to model organic stuff at all. I'm kind of okay at fusion, but that's more like geometric shapes. And I really have no clue how to make organic stuff like this berry. But I'm pretty sure that today's sponsor, Meshi, can come to the rescue here. Meshi is an AI that can make 3D models for you, and it especially excels in making organic models, which is exactly the part that I can't do. There's tons of possibilities. You can make a 3D model just from a text, you can make a 3D model from an image, or you can even take multiple images around the object to have a really good representation of your object in 3D. Also, if that's interesting for the stuff you do, Meshi can also make textures really well. So it's not only great for 3D printing, but you can use it for 3D animation like Blender stuff or even for video game design. They just upgraded their model to Meshi 5, which is now even faster and also more precise and gives better textures. So in all, it's just like a good overhaul and I think it's gonna make my task even easier. As I already kind of said, you can use it for tons of interesting stuff. I had to generate this organic shaped vase for me, which I think came out pretty cool. So if you want to make organic shaped models and don't know how, definitely do try out Meshi. Link is in the description down below. Cool. So let's start with making a blueberry box. What's really helpful is that they also have a prompt generator. So, so I just started the first generation and we'll see what the results look like. So there's a couple questionable results like this one here, but this one I really like. So I think we're gonna go with this and then export that. So that went way better than expected. Now I just gotta measure this to kind of have a reference of how big this thing should be in the end. All right, I'm kind of excited about this stuff. First blueberry is now done. I've also shelled it so there's actually, you know, a hole in the middle where I can put another blueberry. So now I'm gonna cut it so it has two parts and then I'll print it. And I'm super excited for what this is gonna look like. So this is the first look and now we're gonna print it. This worked surprisingly well. This is this is it and like look how cute it is. And in it, if you can open it, fits one single blueberry. <laughs> Super happy how this first one turned out. So far the biggest challenge was really not eating too many of these blueberries, which you can see didn't really work. But I'll also make a bigger version where you can fit like a bunch of blueberries in. The next thing I want to make a box for is this peach because I love peaches, but they're also really squishy and there's so much juice in there. You really don't want to have that in your bag or wherever. So yeah, we're going to make this and I have another idea on how to make a cool mesh model with this with Meshi that might work perfectly for this one. Because one cool thing you can do is just take a picture of the object that you want to have a mesh off and then just import that into Meshi and have it generate a mesh from that picture. So hopefully that's going to look more like my page specifically. And I'm going to try that out. It's been a hot minute since I continued working on this project. The last thing I did was making the peach model in Meshi and that went really well. But from there on out, I had to make, you know, the, the case, the box. And it's a really hard just working with meshes and getting that to work. I'm still kind of working on that. Actually, Fusion really kind of refused to work with these big kind of meshes. So I had to grab my solution, which was my iPad. I have an app on here that's called Nomad Sculpt, which is just made to sculpt and work with meshes. And that was way faster and better. So starting with this, I kind of had to go into that, but I didn't know the software. So the process was kind of hard and you know, it's hard to learn something where you 
have no clue with the software at all, but eventually I managed to get it working. What I did eventually to make the box is to take the whole model of the peach and just scale it down and then cut that out the middle. So that gave me the basics for a box. The really hard thing came to actually make something so that this would go together somehow. How do you make a lip like that? At first I tried to have my two parts bring that into fusion and then kind of trace the outline and work with that but yeah that was just no luck it was super frustrating and really hard to do so eventually i went back to my ipad and made another copy shrunk that down a little bit and then just did a bunch of subtracting and dividing and unifying of the body till i had a slightly inset edge that looked really good and so with what i have i'm really happy and we'll check out how it prints On the first version of the sprint, I ran into a bunch of problems. First of all, this lip was super not clean and kind of just broke off. The problem is that I'm printing it on that side and the supports came off really badly. So I have to fix that. And also on the top part, don't ask me why, there's there's a hole in the top. You know, you, you don't typically want a hole on top. So I'll have to figure out a way how to fix that. Let's make a new try. So I have two ideas on how to fix the problems with my peach print. The first is multi-material supports. Everything pretty much is gonna be PLA and then I'll have two layers of PETG at the top of the support because PLA and PETG don't stick and then I can just take it off way more cleanly and hopefully that's gonna make everything better. Also, I'm gonna switch from tree supports to standard supports, just give it a whole lot more support and hopefully then there's not gonna be a hole in the top, you know? It's not supposed to have that and we'll see how it goes. Let's print. Nice, that went really well. The peach now has a lip that works really well and snaps in nicely. The curves are kind of hard for my 3D printer, but I'm really happy with the result. Next up, I wanna make a box for this watermelon. And since a one color watermelon is basically just a green ball, I really want to get watermelon texture onto this and print it. The cool thing is Meshi can also make textures. So I generated this and then I can hopefully just print that texture to have a really cool look. But now the question is how do I get it into my slicer? I just imported the Meshi file into Bamboo Studio and that didn't really do anything. On the internet, I found that you can export Blender files. So I did that and when I imported that file it did pop up a menu of selecting colors and dumbing that down but it was only one color so it didn't really help me much and yeah so I still have to figure this out wow I just solved my biggest biggest challenge I've been working on this for like the whole entire project to get this work in and I just managed to import all the colors that I made from texture into bamboo slicer so this just has all the colors and I can just print with a texture that Meshi made for me and it's gonna look so great, hopefully. This took so long. So what we have here is three shades of green. We got mistletoe green, bamboo green, and bright green. And hopefully all of that together is gonna give us one perfect watermelon. So after some more experimentation, I can get the texture or the colors into a fusion. So the whole thing is kind of complicated. And my plan is now to just pretty much do everything in Bamboo Slicer. I designed the stuff for the twist lock that I want to do for the watermelon in fusion. But now I'm just kind of putting everything together in Bamboo Slicer and hopefully making that work. This is way more annoying than I thought. Obviously, Bamboo Slicer isn't really made for this. So, you know, lining anything up and then subtracting stuff and adding stuff. It's way harder than it should be. I guess I'm making progress. This was so much work to get together, especially all of it in Bamboo Slicer, which isn't really made for that. So with like 20 hours of print time for one half, so like 40-ish for both, let's just really hope this print works the first time because yeah. All right, we got the printer going, we got the time-lapse going. Now let's wait 20 hours and hope for the best. Behind me, you can see the first half of the watermelon. From outside, it looks amazing. I'm really looking forward to see the whole thing. Thank you. 
there's some support collisions like in here that I might have to just like dremel away or something like that. But other than that, like, doesn't this look cool? All right, let's check if this watermelon actually even fits in there. That's looking pretty good. As you might have seen, I went down to two colors just to save print time. I just started the print for the second half of the watermelon and I decided to make the locking mechanism separate and then I'll just glue it in because I think that's a lot easier. And in just about 30 hours, we'll see how everything worked out. Look at this beauty, let's get working on it. I seem to have made a little miscalculation because there's still this lip that shouldn't be there. So I have to figure out a way how to remove this. So this definitely wasn't the safest way to do this, but I mostly have it. And now I'm gonna use my rotary tool to just kind of sand the edges off. And yeah, you know, I only almost once cut right into my leg and I think that's well, that went pretty much better than expected. So while my twist lock mechanism already goes in, I can't really turn it. So I'm just have to gonna take off a little bit on the inside here and see if it works afterwards. Really gotta say, I love this Hoda rotary tool. Just makes stuff like this so much easier. Just doing this by hand would have sucked. And now this turns perfectly. And see then and it locks. And now, these are like really joined. So now that I got that going, I'm gonna glue in the top into this and try to get the placement right. And then I'm excited to see it in, in all its glory. So I got this 3D printing glue that works quite well. And I'll just hope with me that I don't glue this whole thing shut because that would really suck. So we got this all glued up now and the pattern pretty much matches up, so I'll let this dry for a second and then see if I can still open it. Moment of truth, let's see. Nice, so this looks pretty glued in. Okay, I just realized two things. First of all, a really round object and twist lock is not really easy to operate. And secondly, I, should have, I shouldn't have made all of my you know, indents for the twist lock the same size because now I have no clue which side is which and which way I have to orient it. One should have been bigger, but hey, for the you know use of this video and the general usefulness of this thing, I think it's gonna do. <gasps> wow. First of all, check out how good this looks. And now I'll see if it actually fits in. And there we go. And finally, my watermelon is safe. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. It's watermelon inside a watermelon. <laughs> this is such a stupid idea. So now that my fruit is safe, I feel a lot better. Um, if you're interested for some reason, most of the fruit is in the description down below for you to download and try. I don't know why you'd want that, but you go ahead. Also a big shout out to Meshi for sponsoring this video. Besides my kind of weird project, I think it's a really, really cool thing. And it enables me to do so much more and just get stuff done that I couldn't otherwise. And with all AI products, I think this is really cool. And Meshi offers so much cool stuff, especially for people working with 3D, that it's definitely worth checking it out. And other than that, let me know what kind of fruit you would want a custom box for. And also like, subscribe, share the video with somebody who needs more fruit boxes. I hope I'll see you in the next one.